have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. I have somebody very special with me today. Hi, baby. Hi, Mom. This is my youngest son. Aaron, who has grown up on me, and he is here today to help me cook. And we are gonna make a beef and bean enchilada style casserole. Could it be easier? And to go along with that, what else are we gonna make? Peanut butter cookies. Peanut butter cookies, yum, yum, yum. You gonna stand up and yeah. use your stool? Okay. I have in this pan a pound of ground beef, and I'm using a, a leaner ground ground but you can use, you know, uh, ground chuck, ground beef, whatever you like. If you're gonna use ground beef, you're gonna have a lot of excess fat and you will want to trim that off. So we're gonna get that browned up in this skillet. Let's turn it up just a little bit. Now, to that, Aaron, we're gonna add an onion. Do you wanna cut the onion or do you want me to? I do. You wanna cut half and I'll cut half? How about that? because we need to get it in the pan. All right, we're gonna cut one. This is a good size onion, medium onion. Cut it up, dice it up pretty fine, okay? Dice it. Dice it, fine. Oh. Yeah, it's gonna make you cry. Doesn't make me cry, just thinks. It stinks, onions, oh, I think they smell good. But they do make me cry, they do. All right, dice it up like this, watch mama. See, you put it like that, cut it into pieces, just like that. And then you cut it the and opposite way? And then turn way. it and cut it the opposite way. Okay. Got it? Watch uh -huh. your fingers, please. No worries. Watch your thumb. Actually, you can't worry. Yeah, you I want. do worry. <laughs> no worries. Right. <laughs> I always say that. You know, I will say, I don't think my boys, and they help me cook often, I don't think you've ever cut yourself with a knife while you're cooking, have you? No. I don't think they have, ever. I have one clove of garlic. Ooh, I that garlic. I'm gonna just run through the garlic press because I want it pretty fine. I love garlic. Especially on bread. Especially on bread? Garlic bread. Yeah, garlic bread's really good. You do like garlic bread, don't you? Garlic bread sticks. Woo, that's making my eyes water, buddy. Where'd I put it? Here, I get it. Thank you. You did a good job. All right, just lay it down, I get it. So we're gonna add our onion to our beef. And kind of get it going. If I can keep my eyes from all crying and watering up. Tell you what I want you to do, buddy. I want you to cut those in half. Did I cut them into four? No, cut them in half. We've got 12 corn tortillas. You can use flour tortillas or any kind that you like. You know, the stores nowadays have all kinds of tortillas, all kinds of flavored ones. You can use any kind you like. Those are just six inch corn tortillas. And we're gonna make a casserole out of this. And this is absolutely one of those things that you can make ahead the night before you're gonna serve it and have it ready when you come home from work or school or whatever that you're doing uh, and have it done. Sure, you can do it. Squeeze it like okay. this. Now, yeah, go ahead and squeeze it on the board and then I'll put it in when I'm ready. It's one clove of garlic that we're putting through a garlic press, and sometimes that can be pretty, pretty hard. Want mom to do it? There you go. It's coming out. Keep going. It's as far or as Or you can go. mince it fine. Either way yeah. you go. Yummy, yummy. It looks gross. It does. It tastes delicious. It tastes delicious though, don't it? Mm-hmm. Mm. That's just one clove, just to add a little touch, but we don't want to add that quite yet. This is just a casserole dish. I love enchiladas. But I don't always have time to take the time to roll them and all that stuff, so we're just gonna do a quick dish. Erin, what grade are you in now? Fifth. Fifth grade. What's your favorite subject? Mm, favorite subject? Favorite when we, subject. When we get out of school? No, in school. I'm math. gonna add a little salt and pepper. Math. Math is your favorite? Yeah, you're pretty good at math, aren't you? Second history. What are you, uh, what are you learning in math? 
Tell everybody what all you're learning. You're mm -hmm. doing fractions and figuring out how to add them and all that stuff, aren't you? And yeah, then y'all working on... We learned something very new, but I don't know what it's called. You don't know what it's called? Well, describe it to me. Maybe I can tell you. You're learning how to find the volume and all of that in geometric figures, too, aren't you? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, school nowadays is not the same as it was when I was in school. They're, they're doing stuff now in elementary, late elementary and middle school that I didn't do till I was in high school, some of which college. Of course, I went to school many years ago. What's your favorite thing to cook with, Mom? Mm. We're just browning this up, kind of letting it hang out. On the TV or anything? Wherever, it doesn't matter. What do you like to cook for Mommy? Mm. What would I like to cook for mm -hmm. you? For you? Mm -hmm. For me. If you could make me anything in the world to eat, even if you don't know how to do it yet, what would you make me? Mm. Can't remember what it's called. Describe it to me. Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Yeah. I love Brussels sprouts. If I had to cook something for myself, I'd choose ribs. You love ribs, don't you? You know, you laugh when they say Brussels sprouts, but the truth of the matter is I really do love them, don't I? I love ribs. I love Brussels sprouts. They're so good. I can't convince my kids yet to eat them. I'm just not there. If you have a trick, please write me and let me know how I can get this youngin to eat some Brussels sprouts because he will not do it for mama. It probably won't work. Probably will work. <laughs> All right, now our ground beef is kind of browned up there. It needs just a minute more. It's pretty, pretty good. And our onion. Now, I, again, I used ground round because honestly, at my store this morning, it was on sale and it was the cheapest one. And so that's what I, I chose to use. But you could use, you know, ground beef or ground chuck or ground sirloin or whatever you had. You want to cook it until the, the beef is no longer pink. There's not fat in mine, I'm telling you. You can see, I'll move it aside. There's just very, very little fat. If you had a cut that was maybe a little fattier, you by all means would want to drain that. Now I'll tell you something I learned. We're gonna add our clove of garlic to our mixture. If you add your spices and your uh, things like that before you add liquid, the oils, the, the natural oils in the meat, bring out the flavors. So I always add my spices to my mixture before I add any liquid because that way it, it just, it really, it brings out, it kind of toasts that flavor. This is a teaspoon of cumin and you wanna add that one. That's about a tablespoon or so of chili powder, just regular old chili powder. Just add it right to there. All over, there you go. Now put these two in the sink back there in that white thing. And then just kinda stir that in and give those spices and that garlic just a minute to kinda do their thing and get a little bit toasty before we add anything else to this. Erin, we're gonna take a quick break. Would you tell everybody that we'll be back in just one minute? Right there. We'll be back in just a minute. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. Hand me that. I have one can of pinto beans that I have drained off the excess liquid. Give me those. Peace. And one can of black beans because those two are my favorite. Now, if you have a different favorite that you like, you add what you and your family like. But I like black beans and the pinto beans. And pinto is kind of traditional in Mexican cooking. Mm, mm, mm. Now, I'm also going to add two cans, the little small four-ounce cans of diced chilies. These are not drained. 
because I want the juice to them. If you don't like it quite this spicy, although I think these things are mild, I don't think they're very hot at all. You could just add one. You could also add some of the uh, jalapenos. You could dice up some jalapenos or use the, uh, the canned pickled jalapenos are actually very good in this. But you want two of those little four ounce cans. And that's pretty much it on there. Now, Aaron, what I need you to do is, okay, put these in the sink for mom. Thank you. Now, we are going to start our casserole. This is done. So we just turn it off and set it to the side. Now put in there. I'm gonna let you help me. All right. We're going to layer our corn tortillas in the bottom and lay them and cover that with one layer. No, spread them out a little bit more like that and then overlap them and cover that full bottom layer there while I get a spoon. Good job. Let, put me a layer on the bottom. Okay, good job. How about we turn this layer this way so it gets all okay. flat up against. Put me one more. That's okay. That's good. That's good. All right. You kind of want to, you know, basically get the bottom of your pan covered. Let's move this up here. Then you want to put, well, you got to have enough for the top. Well, okay. Go ahead. That's fine. We got that for stack. All right. That's good. You need about 12 tortillas. We're going to put a layer of the beef mixture in there. Use about half because this is gonna have two layers. Our oven is preheated, Erin, to 350 degrees. You wanna make sure you cover the tortillas with half of this mixture. Again, you could use flour tortillas or these are corn. I like it better with just these. The corn, okay. Uh, then we're gonna add, Erin, we're gonna put a little bit of sour cream this is just regular sour cream, about a cup. You want to, let me show you what I want you to do. This spoon's a little much. Yeah. Let's change out that spoon. How about mm -hmm. sink? All right. Put just little dollops, just like that, and then we're going to smooth it out. Okay? Just like this. Use about half of it. I'll, let, I'll dobble it, and then you can smooth it. How about that? All right, just smooth that around as best you can. Don't worry about it if it's not all the way over. You just want to make sure every serving has a little bit of that with it. You can help, Mama. About a cup or so. Somewhere in there. It's okay. This is fine. No, we got to save some for the next layer. Okay. That's fine. Then, this in this bowl is just two cans of the pre-made up enchilada sauce that you buy over there where you get the taco mixes and the, the sauces and things like that. This is the enchilada sauce, half of it all over. Just half, don't use it all. Pour it half all over it. About half? About half. Mm-hmm. That's about mm, two and a half cups or so. Be careful because it'll spill. Oh. Put some down in here. Okay, here, uh, let mom do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let you do the cheese, how about that? Cheese. You just kinda wanna, oh, about half or so. That's good. Then, you're gonna repeat the process. You're going, not yet, that goes on the top. Right here. You're gonna put the, you're gonna layer on another layer of corn tortillas. And then you're going to repeat your process. You're going to put another layer of beef and another layer of uh, sour cream and another layer of your sauce. And then we're going to top it all with cheese. We only have three. We're going to put the rest of our beef. That's okay. We don't need them. We'll save those. Leftover tortillas, let me tell you what I would do with that. Works better with flour, but if you don't have flour tortillas and you have corn like what I have today. I have an idea. What? What's your idea? With the leftover tortillas. With, okay, tell us what's your idea for those leftover tortillas. What would you do? Except it's sort something. of not an actual tortilla. What do you, what would you do? I'd put. Let me, let me move this so you can show us. I'd put this and then just sprinkle cheese over it. Uh-huh. 
And then if we have any leftover sour cream, I put just dabble a little of it. Okay. Then I just put another one over it. And, and then have a little little sandwich. You know what you could do, Aaron? What? You could cook that in a skillet. And you know what that's called? And you did not know this. It's called a quesadilla. I could make quesadillas. You could take that and you could just what he said. Put just some cheese in there or whatever you want. Put another one on top and just lightly saute them. It's called a quesadilla. Or you could fry them in oil till they puff up. You can eat it. And then put sugar on it and have sopapillas, which we've made on this show before. It's a corn tortilla. Or you could fry them up. You could cut them into wedges like this. Move your hand. Sweet. Lots of ideas for tortillas. Lay them out on single layer on a baking sheet, and you could, by all means, bake those in the oven and have tortilla chips. And I used all my sour cream on the other layer, but that's okay. You get the point. Okay, I'm gonna top it with our, the rest of our sauce. 350 degrees. Cover it, at this point, cover it with foil. Okay. Bake it, not yet. We're gonna bake it for about 30 minutes. Then we're gonna uncover it and put about a cup of, I bought just the four cheese Mexican blend. After about 30 minutes, we're gonna top it with this and bake it for about another 15 minutes until that's melted. We're gonna take another quick break. We're gonna get cleaned up. Come back and we're gonna make some peanut butter cookies. We'll be back with you in just a minute. Now our casserole is in the oven, our beef and bean enchilada casserole, and we're gonna make some peanut butter cookies. Mm. All right, Erin, what I need you to do, this is about a cup of peanut butter. Peanut butter. Uh, you can use smooth, if you'll let go, I'll flip it in there. Mm. Uh, you can use smooth or crunchy, either one, and I bought crunchy, so that's what we're using. If you don't mm. have it, use smooth. Good either way. All right, go ahead and start. Mix in one teaspoon of vanilla. Okay, go ahead. And then using a mixer, because this is a very stiff dough, you're going to put it down in there first. All right, now put it on one. On mine, it's a one, yours might be low. Start out, and then move it up to two, Aaron. Okay. Go ahead and whip it up. Start out slow. What you're trying to do is incorporate air into the peanut butter here. Go ahead and put it up one more. And one more. Okay, to this we are gonna add, let's see, get that, get that over there. Get this. Okay, we're just really trying to incorporate some air. We're gonna add some white sugar. No, it's going everywhere. And some brown sugar. Everywhere. And you're gonna keep mixing that. Let me put this, I'll tell you uh, a little hint. Oopsies. If your mixing bowl keeps moving, put a wet towel underneath it and it won't do it anymore. All right, you get all that mixed up. It's in little balls. Keep going, it'll keep whipping out. It's in little balls. We're gonna add two eggs, uh, one at a time. Get off the side. Add two eggs, one at a time and get it incorporated before you add the others. Keep going. Now turn it up a little more. Go ahead and turn it up one more. Now you see how you're mixing it and it's smoothing out? That's what you want. Add the other egg. Okay. 
I'm trying to tame it. Now, in this bowl, I have a cup and a half of flour, regular all-purpose flour. I'm adding about a teaspoon of salt and about a half a teaspoon of baking powder. And I'm just gonna whisk that together in this bowl. Peanut butter cookies, I guess everybody loves peanut butter cookies unless you have an allergy. I, I don't know of anybody that doesn't like peanut butter cookies. Do you know some, you don't like peanut butter cookies? You like peanut. I do, not me. You do? Not me. Okay. We're gonna add our flour slowly in about three batches and incorporate all the flour in before, before you add any more. And sometimes you need to scrape down the sides. You could use a stand mixer to do this too. It's dragging me everywhere. It's a good job to do, for your kids to do. Add another third of the flour mixture. There you go. Keep it going. You're doing a good job. It's going too fast. So, so look, turn it down if it's going too fast for you. <laughs> Get away from me here. All right, and the remainder of your flour. Get all that mixed in there, buddy. I'm keeping it on four for right now. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll keep it on five. It's a lot faster. That's whoa, okay. Whoa, whoa. All right, keep going. This is a very stiff dough. Mommy, oh, keep it's going. dough. It's all right. Oh, it's dough. Yeah, it's cookie dough. That's what it is. Oh, okay, that's sticky. good. That's good. Turn it off. All oh, right. yeah. Now, wait a minute. Let mom have it for just a second. Get okay. all the batter After out. Done. Yeah, you can lick them clean. Yes. After we're off the air. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to see you licking cookie mm -hmm. dough. They think it's funny. Pardon me for making noise, but I gotta get that out of there. It is a very, very stiff dough. Put those to the side because in your house, you know somebody's gonna lick it too. Oh, just at the bottom. Yeah, let's get that stirred in there. Make sure at the bottom. Okay. Now. To make the cookies, you can refrigerate this dough uh, if you want to, but you know what? You don't have to. Take about a teaspoon with clean hands, roll it into a ball, about like that. You want to do one? Sounds easy. Okay, it is easy. Spoonful, mm. roll it into a ball. Sticky. It is a little sticky, but that's okay. And then place them, now these are going to spread. I love the nonstick foils and parchment paper for things because you don't, uh, you know, I just, I really don't like scrubbing pans. So I line my sheets, but if you don't, you know, if you don't want to line yours, that's okay. You want them about two inches apart. Okay, you good? And then while Aaron's rolling out, I'll show you how we finish these cookies. Take a glass, just like this, and let me get a little flour here, hold on and dip it in a little bit of flour, and I'll show you what we're doing here. You ready? We're gonna take a, just a little small cup or measuring cup or something, kind of flatten it just a little bit, just like that. Traditionally, peanut butter cookies have this on there and do a crisscross pattern. We're just gonna keep rolling out cookies and flattening them, then we're gonna get them in a 350 degree oven, the same as our casserole. They bake for about 10 minutes. We'll be back in just a second. We are ready to eat. Here is our delicious beef and bean enchilada casserole. Now, about uh, five minutes before it's done, I take the foil off and then just sprinkle over, oh, about, you know, eight ounces or so, a small bag of the pre-shredded. I bought the Mexican four cheese blend uh, and just let it melt. It takes about five minutes, and look how delicious that is. I would serve that with some shreds of... Uh, iceberg lettuce 
is how I would serve it with maybe some extra sour cream or diced tomatoes. However, that you know, you like your enchiladas, whatever you like on there would be delicious. Some sliced jalapenos, you could do that. Or plain, I mean, you don't have to add anything else to it, but it is delicious. Here's our wonderful peanut butter cookies, and Erin has mm. been chomping at the bit to have one. Which one was it that you wanted? All right, you can have it, go ahead and eat it. Our wonderful peanut butter cookies that we made earlier, and oh, I love peanut butter cookies. Now you could, with these, before you bake, if you wanted to put one of the little chocolate kisses on top, you could. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also, well, not before you bake with that, but when you bring it fresh out of the oven, put one of those little chocolate kisses on there to kind of melt how they taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before you bake them, you could sprinkle them or mix into the batter some chocolate chips if you wanted to, whatever you wanted to do. And I think I better taste one too, just to make sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. They good? Mm-hmm. A little glass of milk. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Peanut butter cookies. Every time I make peanut butter cookies, I think about my brother. He was his favorite. He loved them with the little kisses on top. Thank you for joining with me today. I enjoyed having you with me. Your mouth is full. Mm -hmm. So is mine. But oh well. From our family to yours, thank you for joining with us. We want you to try these recipes and let us know what you think. And we'll see you next time on Everyday Manna. Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.